In the modern world, many of us face a choice between either passion or profit. Do we do what we love and accept less or no money as a result, or do we put all of that aside and instead prioritize financial security? I call this choice the great dilemma because it has very large implications for our path in life. I mean, this is probably one of the most important decisions that we will ever make what we do for a living. This will dictate how we spend the majority of our time for 30 plus years of our life. And it will also influence who we meet, where we live, what our values are, and of course, what levels of life are locked or unlocked to us due to our incomes. Again, massive implications. But fortunately, Today, there exists a way to merge these two worlds of passion and profit, to be able to do what you love and make a lot of money in the process. Now, I'm sure there are many different ways to do this, but I can only speak to the one that I've been able to successfully do in my own life. And the way to do that is to become a sovereign individual who participates in the information revolution. Now, in my previous video, I broke down both the great dilemma and the concept of the sovereign individual. And in the video before that one, titled Financial Independence is a Huge Trap, I broke down the information revolution. Going forwards, I'm going to be putting all of these videos on this particular topic into a playlist so that you can benefit from the sequential nature of these discussions. But we'll go over a quick refresher today because it will be very important for the next part of the framework that I would like to introduce you to. So first, let me introduce you to the entire framework, then we will refresh on the components that I've already talked about. And then I will introduce you to the new component, which is called the circle of serving. So the framework for today is to solve the great dilemma you can participate in the information revolution as a sovereign individual, and you become a sovereign individual by following the circle of serving. Now, let's break down each part individually. So as I mentioned earlier, the great dilemma is the choice we are faced with between either passion or profit. And inevitably, most of us choose the path of profit because we are going to be prioritizing financial security over basically everything else. We put our dreams aside and say, let's be realistic. You know, I, I want to have security in my life. I want to be able to have a stable relationship. I want to be able to be held in high esteem by my friends and family and colleagues. I want to be able to have a stable life with a home and maybe a family. So I'm going to play it safe and just stick to a regular career path. I myself made this choice for the first few years of my career, but I was always looking for a reasonable and pragmatic way out. And eventually, I did find that way out. Now, I'm not going to tell that story here today in detail because I've already done it several times elsewhere. But the important point is it wasn't until recently that I realized exactly what I had accomplished. And that was participating in this thing that I think of as the information revolution and participating in it as a sovereign individual. So now that we've refreshed on the great dilemma, let's refresh on the information revolution. Essentially, humanity has experienced a series of revolutions in terms of the economic organizational structure of society. Thousands of years ago, we experienced the agricultural revolution, which radically changed how we lived by causing us to become settlers instead of nomads. We domesticated plants and animals while they also domesticated us. This massively disrupted the 
food economy. After that, we experienced the Industrial Revolution, which again radically changed the economy, this time disrupting the manufacturing sector. Because up until this point, rates of self-employment were high and business ownership was quite decentralized. There were many, many, many small businesses and relatively few large ones. But the Industrial Revolution changed this because it introduced massive scale on the manufacturing side of the economy, and as a result, many small businesses could not compete. So they had to close up shop. Therefore, self-employment rates went down and business ownership became much more centralized. Fast forward to today and my conception is we are currently experiencing another revolution, this time as it pertains to the information economy. And that revolution is the information revolution. You see, you probably never really thought of the information economy as something that existed, right? Is information really like a commodity that can be bought and sold? Yes, I think it very much is, except up into this point today, there has not been a free market for us to exchange information. In fact, over the past couple hundred years, or you could even make the case going back even further, that there have been various monopolies who have had basically sole reign over the information economy. Historically, that could have been religious institutions, monarchies, printing presses, but more recently, it has been education institutions like colleges and universities. And with monopolies comes the ability to charge extremely high prices for your product since you are the only place that somebody can get your product. 50 to 100,000 plus degrees? <laughs> Ring any bell? Unfortunately for those monopolies, thanks to the connectivity of the internet and the abilities granted by social media, we now have the closest thing we have ever had to a free market for information. This is the information revolution, and I've been participating in it for the past three years or so, doing what I love, and making a really good living as a result. Now, if you want more context on this whole information revolution, again, I would check out the new playlist that I've made and go to the first video in it as there is a much longer deep dive into the specifics of this revolution and how it is disrupting the information economy. Or of course, just continue to follow along because I will be talking a lot more about it. Now, let's refresh on the sovereign individual so then we can finally get to the circle of serving. So a sovereign individual is someone who is able to exist in the world free from external control. And there's three main components that make up this concept. A sovereign individual is someone who knows themselves, who operates in the world as themselves and does not rely on external forces for their subsistence. And with these concepts, we can actually simplify it a bit to just say that a sovereign individual is somebody who has mental independence, physical independence, and financial independence. These are the traits that allows one to be self-reliant, but not only for their own benefit. As you'll see as we keep going here, it is very much for the benefit of others as well. Now this brings us to our new concept, the circle of serving. The circle of serving is the idea that you can do what you love and make a lot of money by alternating between serving yourself and then serving others in a cyclical fashion. Let's dive into what this means because I think this is a really powerful concept because it is able to bridge these two worlds that normally <clears throat> are apart from one another, these worlds of passion and profit. So first, let me give you a bit of a backstory on how this idea actually came about in my mind. I think this will provide some really helpful 
context to really grasp the significance of it. Two weeks ago, when I was having calls with a number of you, one individual in particular told me this really interesting story about this journey that they were about to embark upon. They were about to leave their very successful career behind to move far away, perhaps live in a secluded cabin, and then just spend every single day focusing on their art and their creativity, writing and making films. Naturally, I was very excited to hear about this journey that this individual was about to embark upon because it is a journey that I myself am very sympathetic to. But then I recalled experiences in my own life or stories that I heard or came across from the financial independence community of individuals who placed all their happiness and meaning and fulfillment on this notion of being able to explore themselves. For example, I had the idea that I myself was going to retire sometime in my 30s and then I was gonna move out into a cabin and then just spend my days meditating, doing martial arts, chopping wood, baking bread, writing, you know, just doing all the stuff that I wanted to explore and cultivate within myself. But then I realized, well, can't I kind of do a lot of this stuff right now anyways? And then I realized, yeah, <laughs> I can. And then so I did, and I do today. And that's when it really clicked for me that this was not the full picture of what I really wanted. And I would suggest that it might not be for you either. And that's because you've forgotten about a full half of this circle. You've forgotten about the part where I think it is very important to serve others. In my opinion, fulfillment or a sense of purpose or meaning will not come from self-cultivation alone. It will come from a cyclical relationship between serving yourself and then serving others. Not only that, this cycle also reveals a pathway that you can use to participate in the information economy and make a really good living as a result. Here's what I mean. Let me make this a little bit more tangible and grounded in reality by giving you an example of how exactly I was able to do this in my own life. When I first started posting videos online, my intention was to serve others. For those of you who've been around this entire time, you'll remember that back then my channel name was Cash College and it had a mission to make financial education more accessible. I had a professional and personal background in this subject matter and I realized that there was this really big problem in society where society did a really bad job of equipping us with basic financial education. So I thought I could try and help by making videos about personal finance in a more fun and unintimidating way. And so I did and it was successful. But the thing about serving others is if you continue to do it too long, I think you begin to lose yourself in the process. You see, just as you can become too self-indulgent by exploring yourself, I also think that you can give up too much of yourself by serving others. In my case, I knew that financial knowledge and power was just the first problem in my life that I wanted to solve. It was like the first rung of Maslow's hierarchy, if you're familiar with that. So ultimately, it was just a stepping stone. It was not my entire identity, but actually a very small part of it. It was a tool in my toolkit. It wasn't the only thing that I had distinct knowledge or experience in, and it certainly was not something that I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to. I could never imagine myself being the type of person who just talks about the same thing for years and years. I'm I'm a generalist. I'm, I'm not a specialist, and I have a very strong desire to be constantly evolving, constantly growing. I mean, if I thought the same thing I did about a particular topic five years ago and still think that today, 
something's probably not quite right there. My, my views should be constantly evolving. So I recognized that it was probably time to take a period to serve myself, to explore, to experiment, and to make things just for me. I should take this opportunity actually to thank all of you who have been extremely supportive throughout this entire process because honestly, a very big part of me thought that my entire channel might just burn to the ground uh, as I progressively made more and more uh, videos about distant topics from personal finance. And I was prepared and okay with that actually happening, but it turns out it did not. So big thank you to everyone who's been extremely supportive throughout that entire process. What actually happened was I was able to connect with those of you out there who actually relate to me. I should say also as a side note, personal finance, financial independence, all of this stuff is a very integral piece to this entire holistic puzzle, okay? It's not just something that's now going to be forgotten, put on the back burner. It is still such an essential piece of this entire thing, but it is a piece of a holistic picture. Anyways, as a result of taking this time to serve myself, I have grown so much in such a short period of time. I mean, we're talking about years of growth packed into a very short expanse of time. Growth in my mentality, growth in my spirituality, growth in my physicality. I have never been in a better place within my internal self. But now, after having a successful period of serving myself, it is now time to turn my attention once again back to serving others, integrating everything I've learned from serving myself. And so there's this incredible interplay within the circle of serving that goes something like this. When you serve others, you gain skill, you gain reputation, you gain fulfillment, and you can gain money, but you also give yourself. And you can imagine there being a finite amount of this. If you give too much, there's not enough left for you and negative consequences can come about. So before that happens, we can cycle into serving ourselves where we also gain skill, we gain perspective, fulfillment and energy. But in this case, we may be giving up money and other resources. And of course, this too is finite. So therefore, we have to be careful not to become too self indulgent that we run out of resources. It has a certain seasonality to it, right? When we serve others, we're, we're gaining these things and we're, we're gaining resources, which we can then use to secure us for a period of time to focus on serving ourselves where we also gain things from that process. But this entire time, we're gaining skill in both of these phases. We're gaining fulfillment in both of these phases. So after each completion of the circle, you should be a better person and in a better position to help someone than you were before. And because of those two things, being a better version of yourself and increasing your capacity to help others, as a byproduct, it inevitably results in the increased capacity to earn income. Something I've mentioned and something I'm going to keep harping on in these videos is that I strongly believe income is a byproduct. It should not be the goal. I don't even really pay attention to my income. I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. I don't really look at that stuff that often and I haven't set a goal on it in a long time. Income is not actually something that's under our control, at least directly. It's indirectly under our control, but that's very different from being directly under our control. And in fact, another piece to the whole sovereign individual concept that we'll talk about in a future video is this idea of only focusing on things that are within your control and then relinquishing things that are not. Basically, what is directly under my control is my ability and my capacity and my execution of serving others. 
And if those things are strong, then as a result, most likely my income will be two. Whether or not I have a goal set on it or whether or not I even really pay attention to it. Of course, we all want and we all need money partially because of the way society is constructed and partially because we all have desires as humans. But I hope it's clear that this is an effect of a cause that we are trying to create. If we do our best to focus on controlling the causes, then the effects will fall where they may as a result. So to put this all together, the circle of serving is a method that can be used to navigate the information economy. If you have some type of skill that you use today to solve problems in your own life or for others, you can teach others that skill for money. Now, if you do not have a valuable skill, you can spend some time serving yourself to learn a skill and then use it to solve a problem in your own life or for others. And then again, you can teach this skill to others in exchange for money. For example, the person who I mentioned earlier who was leaving behind their career and going off to be able to explore themselves, that's fantastic because they were entering this serving themselves phase of the cycle. And once they come out of that, they should have a whole bunch of really valuable things to share with other people. At minimum, they can share the story of what they've done and the journey that they've been through. They can take people along with them throughout it, which I think actually adds a lot of depth to their artwork that they're going to also hopefully share with others instead of just sharing the artwork alone. It provides this wonderful and interesting and intriguing backstory to it all because there are definitely tons of people out there who want to do the same thing. Tons of people out there who want to be able to leave their careers behind, just go off and explore themselves. And so they would be very interested in hearing about how that process went and getting to know this individual on a deeper level. I mean, I personally would like I hope I, I, I really, really hope that they share all of this, I would love to see it. Either way, if you want to continue improving impact more people positively, and make more money as a result, you cycle between these two distinct phases. After a certain point of doing this, you will be able to satisfy the criteria of being a sovereign individual. You will have mental independence because you will have spent time exploring yourself to the degree that you have a very good idea of who you are, what truly matters to you, and what your values are independent of everyone else. You will have physical independence as you've probably been taking good care of your physical body as a healthy physical body is very conducive to a very healthy mind, which is absolutely essential for being able to successfully participate in the information economy. And on top of that, physical independence also means that you have location independence, you can live in various locations, you are not tethered or bound to a particular spot. And finally, you'll also have some degree of financial independence as you've been exchanging your information with others for money. And just to add a little bit more context here by information, I do not just mean education. Information can be education, it can be teaching someone something. But I would say information is a much more broad and general thing. Information can be art, it can be music, it can be poetry, it can be a film, it can be anything that makes you feel something or makes you learn something. It's just media that gets transmitted to another person and impacts them in some way, whether it's in the head or the heart, wherever, doesn't really matter. It's all the same thing. And this exchange, this exchanging it with somebody else can lead to earning income as a result of participating in the information economy and revolution. So then finally, from becoming a sovereign individual in this way, you will solve the great dilemma in your own life, you will be able to merge the two worlds of passion and profit. 
you will be able to do what you love and make a good living doing so. The audio for these types of episodes is now on Spotify, and I am also sharing my extended thoughts on a wide variety of topics on Twitter if you would like to follow me over there. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Until next time.